Welcome to the Discord Mead round two. Today we have a brand new recipe created by a Discord member of mine. And he is here on the call to taste test it and give his affirmation or declining or whatever he wants to at the end of this. So um, in today's video, you're gonna get to see the whole creation of this brew and I'm, I'm quite excited. So Ben, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me, appreciate it. This is a really fun uh, experiment to be a part of. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm excited. And before we get too far, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Homebrew Ohio. They are, um, they have collaborated with me to give every single Discord uh, enacted person who takes on this responsibility a $50 gift card to Homebrew Ohio. So Ben is walking away today with 50 bucks to Homebrew Ohio to buy whatever he wants. And on that note, the things you can buy at Homebrew Ohio are limitless, not only for mead and beer and wine, but for pretty much everything else you ever need. Um, I personally really like their mead kit. It is a great starting point to start making mead if you are someone who is brand new to the game. So go check out Homebrew Ohio. Um, in fact, all the equipment I've used is available at Homebrew Ohio. So shout out to them. Thank you for sponsoring this video. Ben, let's go ahead and start at the beginning. We'll kind of save the tasting for the end. So this began on Discord. We, we had done Discord Mead round one and I, I immediately wanted to start a new one. So I reached out and I said, who wants to be in charge? And um, I believe the public chose you, right? We kind of took a voting, we did a, a, a voting process of sorts to choose um, who would be the one and, and you ended up being the guy. There's a little bit of a backstory of like how we came into making mead and then everybody sort of voted for who they wanted to be sort of the ringleader of the, of the contest. So I'm yeah. really, really thankful for that. that. It's been a fun experience. I'm excited yeah. to try it, <laughs> I, Well, I'm, yeah. So, we, we, uh, the public chose you and you essentially walked through our, the, the ingredients in the process. You presented the ingredients and the process for me. So the primary, secondary, I mean, really everything wow. down to the uh, ounce. Yeah. Just sort of brainstormed a bunch of options every couple of days for everyone to vote on and sort of, sort of guide the process, but kind of let everyone take over it as well there were parts of it that i know i like with the chicory root personal mm -hmm. preference i love chicory root in a boche it really smooths flavors out and adds a little bit of earthiness to it but most yeah. of the other stuff was the just the discord and of course i had my vote and i think my cousin's in your discord group so he had his vote but they never matched but um yeah so, so yeah, let's talk about that recipe. So this is the recipe you built, and it'll of course be on screen for people. Two, uh, I ended up using two and a half pounds of sourwood honey. Um, 15, I believe I used 20 ounces of blackberry wine base from that Vintner's Choice thing. Water up to a gallon, two and a half grams of mangrove jacks, MO5, one tablespoon of chicory root, one half teaspoon of powdered wine tannin, um, I did use the orange peel, so one quarter ounce of orange peel, dried orange peel, one cinnamon stick and one vanilla bean. And the only thing I didn't do here, I did back sweeten with sourwood honey, but I did not use fresh blackberries. So I, I did break the rules a little bit. That's right. Didn't affect too much. And I'm, I have a feeling you made that decision based on what it tasted like after it was done anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, these and that those uh, wine bases are pretty strong. As I'm finding, as I use them more, they do retain the flavor pretty well. So, we introduced that recipe. Now we had some special requests. You said in the primary you wanted. I'm having to go back to the Discord because it's been a long time since we've. Yeah, I was gonna pull it up too, actually. So you wanted me to include the wine tannin and um, chicory root chicory root in the primary and I did not do that only because I didn't have the, the chicory root I had to go shopping for it and I had a hard time finding it and I didn't have the orange peel so I my process kind of got flipped around <clears throat> and it's really I not heard, that'll do much in primary anyway I just like to keep it in there as long as possible so yeah 
I don't think it'll be much different in the end. So I started pretty basic. I started with just the blackberry wine base, the honey, the water, yeast, and of course, yeast nutrient. I used some Fermate O because everyone needs to do that. Um, and then that fermented through. We started at a gravity of... I do remember the, uh, the style I wanted everyone to kind of pick from was mashups of two separate styles, like be it a Boche and a Melomel, or a Sizer and a Boche, or an Acer Glue and a Boche, or a Hopping and Melomel, or some some kind of mashup. I think Shandy was on there as well, like a Beery Melomel, and that would have been fun too. But I, I love the idea of mead because it's able to mix together with other, like you could you could put a pine mint with a Sizer and it probably wouldn't be bad. It'd be pretty good maybe, but you couldn't do that with wines. You can't do that with like, a Merlot and a, a some, you know, I don't know wines very well, but you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be yeah. well. for a stout and an IPA. That would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, yes. I, and I love that idea. Cause you were really, I mean, you're bridging the gap between these two different yeah. worlds and I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I did again, like I said, I, it's been a while. I did both shade the honey for 30 minutes. Um, so in that primary, of course, before everything, both shade it all and um, let that go through the primary. We started at 1.090, and after the primary, I believe we're at 1.000, because the yeast, you know, they just kind of chew through everything. At that point, I took and added all of those spices, except for the vanilla bean, because again, I had not shopped for it well enough, and so that was the very last thing I introduced, and I think it was a smart choice because it's a delicate flavor and it allowed me to kind of come back with it. So I added all those spices except for the vanilla bean. Those sat in for a couple weeks. I can't remember the exact amount of days and then racked off of those and added the vanilla bean that sat for a week or two, racked off of that, stabilized it so that we could safely back sweeten and back sweeten with some more sourwood honey and let it set for a little bit, bottled it and shipped it off to you. And here we are. I had a chance to ferment with sourwood honey yet, but I've tried it a few times and I was really excited about it being in a boche because it had some really good caramely flavors to it. Like yeah. Really good flavors. Well, let's get into this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and open mine up. Let's open it up. Hopefully there's no carbonation. Great, no carbonation. That's always exciting. That smells nice. It has, uh, it's a very dark color. I mean, it's not, not going to be clear. That's for sure. Uh, that's all right. But I mean, it's, it's decent and clear if you look above, in my opinion. It's got a nice color to it though. Like a, like a, like a burnt, like a burnt red, mm -hmm. darker burnt orange, like a red hues. It smells really nice though. Like yeah, what do you get on the nose? Like, I'm actually smelling like burnt sugars and, and blackberry exactly what is in this <laughs> mm -hmm. i get a lot of that orange um a lot of orange zest and there's some brightness in there that is part of that blackberry base you know naturally blackberry is bright that's really nice and i'm glad we went with the vendor's best though because it's a really good like i was thinking about using my gift card on something like that from the vendors yeah. they have, those are really really excellent choices to add like i used one just to up the flavor in a berry that I did because I didn't want to use 100 pounds of berries. I had 50 in there already, so I had the blackberries and yeah. And clearly, clearly it's done a lot because that is just in primary and no, uh -huh. no secondary, that's, that's a good flavor. And the, the thing that's interesting to me is um, as I spend more time around vanilla, the, vanilla is a soft aroma, but it also brings such a a little sweetness to the nose of stuff, yeah. but it also is just like blanketing and makes everything a little more mm -hmm. calm. It's like you put a sheet over something. It's just a little like I get up now that you've said it again and I knew it was in here, but but if you hadn't said it, I wouldn't have gotten it. But yeah. you're right, got a little bit of the sweetness to the nose. Well, you ready to try it? Go. Not bad at all. What are you uh, What are you getting from it? 
So I can tell it's young, but not in a bad way. I'm getting blackberry and just a good amount of caramelized honey on it. Cause I, you said you did just a, just a little bit. I remember I asked for that. Cause I don't like, I've had some Boches where people like to, like if a Boche has notes of a s'mores, like people say, I've had some Boches where somebody made their s'mores and accidentally dropped the marshmallow in the fire, waited for the fire to go out and put, plucked the marshmallow out the next day and it just nasty, uh, but a good medium. And that's coming through really well, especially with the blackberry, like a caramelized honey and it's melding with those acids of that berry and it's really nice. I was very nervous when you first pitched the idea of all of these flavors because there's a lot, a lot happening with the spices. Yeah. And coming out of that primary and right out of the stage where I added the spices, it was, uh, I didn't do like a, a, a recorded tasting, but I recall vividly that it was a little overwhelming because there was just so much going on. Um, Oops, sorry. It, <laughs> no, 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 not, but it was just because there's a lot of spices. I mean, you think about the, the combinations of, of those things, yeah. uh, the orange to cinnamon, those are, are pretty oh, yeah. parallel flavors. I was nervous about that as well because I was, I put them in there as sort of an option, but I did not expect everyone to lean towards some of them, I was like, yeah, cool. I'm glad it went that way. And then the other ones, I'm like, dang it. I was really hoping that would go the other way. <laughs> yeah. Like, I probably wouldn't have added the cinnamon or the vanilla myself. I probably would have added the dried orange peels. That's a nice one. But uh, yeah, it turned out really nicely though. I I do think that now that it's had a little time to sit and it's, I mean, it's pretty young. We are only, if I go right back to my notes, we are uh, about two months old on this thing, a little over two months. So not a ton of time, but even in that little bit of time, it has come down a little bit. And I th do think it's partially because of the sweetness, because of the more sour wood, the sour wood honey coming in and the vanilla. I think it kinds of, kind of sands the edges, rounds it out. I always, I'm a big advocate for adding wine tan into stuff because I think it helps round off flavors in the end. It does more for a brew than people give it credit for especially clarifying. Oh my uh, gosh, yes. And like, this is actually really well balanced. It's a nice sort of lower end of me lower end of medium sweet. I think uh, it's got pretty good at, did you add acids to this or is that just from the, yeah, it's got a good acid balance and then the tannin right on the end of it is really nice. I, um, I do think that with a little, some fresh blackberries like you had recommended, I do think that could have brought back a little brightness in that regard yeah yeah i don't think that would have hurt at all but at the same time i don't mind this way either it's always hard to tell because like maybe in six months you know it'll be better without the blackberry anyway yeah and that's that's the thing is this thing um <clears throat> those i'm very curious to see how those spices uh age you know some spices really like to pop in a year you know cinnamon might be just off the charts while you know that orange peel could be you know, down here. And so that is part of this fun is seeing what's going to happen with this thing in a while and, and, and uh, some time. Yeah. That's really the only way to know how to balance things well is doing it, letting things sit. Exactly. Exactly. I made my first mold anything recently and it was, uh, it's really good now, but I'm worried it's going to fade away. You know, it was it had seven different Christmas spices in it. So it tastes great, but it yeah, tastes, it still tastes great. <laughs> hey, you never know. I guess we'll find out. You have to let me know. Oh yeah, I was gonna send you a bottle of that actually. Well, I'll, I will gladly. I'll try whatever you send me. Bomb with macadamia blossom, and yeah, I don't know what to name it, so I'm taking suggestions. I thought Christmas in or Christmas in July because peaches and Christmas, but peaches are fall and spring, so that doesn't really work. And, uh, <laughs> We can maybe down in the comments of this, we can get some, we'll get some people to help uh, make a name for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is great. And I'm actually really excited to take part in the next one too, for just even voting. That was a really fun thing to do. Whatever, I, whatever. Yeah. So what would you, as the designer of this recipe, is there anything you would change based off of my version? Of course, this is just my attempt at it. Is there anything you change or add Pull the recipe up again. So, a mellow mellow boche. 
with a light to medium toast is something I specified for the caramel, caramelizing. Um, then we chose the fruit, blackberry. Banana would have been a good choice too, but orange would have been interesting, but I don't, I don't know if that would have been great. Like a, like I imagine chocolate orange would be good, but mm -hmm. the orange might not turn out like that. Banana though, I do that all the time. That one's great. Uh, sour honey, that's, that's the one I was hoping to go for. Macadamia blossom would have been good also. Uh, let's see, we got semi-sweet. That was perfect. Oh, the spices, that, that question was a big one. And I was leaning towards either, and I changed my vote on this one a couple times because F had root beer concentrate, flat, fresh blackberries and graham crackers. And that would have mm. been weird and probably really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then maple syrup, graham crackers and pecan extract was my second like runner up, but that probably would be really good. You know, not have to worry about it being weird, just a basic good. And that that's probably the first one I would have changed for sure. But everybody, you know, and that that's perfectly fine. That's what the Discord thing is for. Everybody wanted to try to orange peel, cinnamon, and vanilla bean. And that also ended up well. So that's probably the one I would have changed about it is uh root beer concentrate, fresh blackberries, and graham crackers is the one I would really, really leave. <laughs> yeah. And that would be yeah, that would have been interesting. So, I root beer flavors are just spices, right? Stardis and um, all the other root, root spices that are in there. Uh, and I don't think that would be bad with blackberries and the graham crackers would have, I saw your video today about the sizers with the with the graham crackers in it. And uh, yeah, that's a really good, just abjunct as well. I, the graham crackers are super interesting. I just threw some in another brew, you know, I it is, um, it's odd. And you feel yeah. wrong when you throw them into a brew because you're like, this doesn't look, and you know, it immediately just gets all soggy and you're like, well, this just looks like a mess. But it really does add some interesting flavors. That you might be lucky with like clarifying on their own because I've always had to use something afterwards with I, with graham crackers. I, um, the ones I've had, have, I've let set for long enough that they've naturally clarified, but I'm sure in a, in a more rushing, like, you know, if you're trying to, Put it bottle it sooner then you might end up having to use something yeah so i want that stuff for i think three months but i used way too many green crackers and it was one gallon i think i used seven or eight oh yeah yeah i've only used the my peak has been like uh for a gallon maybe three so <laughs> that's quite a few all right ben this has been a lot of fun and i um he, like i said when this recipe was created there was a lot of hesitancy in my heart because I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of things. But I am very pleased with how it turned out. I think it it does work and it just goes to show that even recipes that, uh, well, really to show that you can take any recipe and you can learn how to balance things well. And I'm not, I will not just sit here and self-proclaim that this is the best rendition of this ever because I'm sure that somebody in the universe, a lot of people in the universe could recreate this and make it even better. Um, but I do think this combination works well. See, and I think this is good enough that I would want to recreate it. <laughs> like it, it wasn't like, hey, I'm gonna stay away from that. It was good enough that I would like to do this again. This is, I mean, pretty pretty good flavors that you don't get anywhere else. You can't really find that somewhere, Boche with blackberries yeah. in it. So on that on that note, I'm gonna put the the um, recipe up again. The hard thing for some people might be sourwood honey, and obviously, if you have access to it, feel free to get it. If you want to sub out any other honey because you can or have to, then try it. But I would recommend this recipe to at least try once and um, adjust things as you want. But don't be afraid to experiment. Obviously, experimentation is where we most of the time learn the most. That's the best part. Exactly, exactly. So, Ben, thank you for um, spearheading this project. Um, just like he said earlier, there <clears throat> will more than likely be a Discord part three. And if you would like to be the person to lead the charge on the next one, you need to be a part of the Discord. And so the Discord is down in the description, also on the screen. Essentially, it's just another great community to chat with people about mead. We all love mead. We all want to make mead better every single time. So we just kind of have a common goal. Feel free to join us there. Join, uh, be part of this project in the future. And um, I'm excited for the next one. 
So, Ben, thank you again for your time. I'm super excited to uh, yeah, thanks for, see thanks what for happens time. with the next one. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Until uh, next time, Ben. See you next time. Sweet. <laughs>